Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter here at Second Swing. Um, today we're at the Minneapolis Tour Van location and we're going to be talking about something that's pretty, you know, important in the club fitting, right, is the gapping. For Thomas here, uh, he's hit three shots with anything from his 60 degree wedge to his three driving iron. Uh, now that you've <laughs> rested yourself a little bit, that's a lot of swings. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to kind of have you go through and basically analyze your own gapping. Uh, and you know, kind of give a, a sneak peek maybe into what you know a gapping analysis looks like for golfers. So, Thomas, um, before we get started, what you know are the kind of overarching you know themes that you would want to see in a gapping analysis from you know wedges all the way up to iron? What do you look for in terms of the numbers between each uh, step up? Yeah, so there's a few different factors that we always look at. Um, one thing you'll notice as you go is the ball speed number should increase per club. So you'll notice starting at my 60 degree that ball speed number kind of just keeps increasing as we yeah. kind of go up there. It's because the club is a little longer, there's, there's less loft on the club, yeah. it's going to go a little further. Typically, you'll also notice launch angle also follows suit. So launch angle now much higher here with um, a club that's got more loft on it will essentially decrease as you go through the bag, yeah. clubs that have you know less loft on it. Same thing that will also happen, spin. Spin will start out at about 10, 11,000, and then as we kind of go each club less, we'll notice that spin rate is probably going to be about eight or 900 RPM different between each club. Okay. So more spin with the wedge to get that ball to stop on the green. And you'll just notice as we have less loft on the club, that spin rate number will also just keep just decreasing as well. Probably the most important thing that we're doing today, though, in, a, in an iron set gapping analysis is the carry distance. Yeah. So carry distance is very important. About 10 to 15 yard gap between each club is ideal. Okay. So that's all the way through the bag. It's a good way for us to see where maybe a player that's playing a long iron maybe consider, may want to consider playing a hybrid instead sure. would be a good option to kind of pay attention to. Look at my gapping analysis, you'll notice it's pretty consistent all the way through from about 10 to 15 yards. Um, so that shows that I can still handle yeah. that, that driving iron, that four iron in my, in my bag. But for players that maybe don't have as much swing speed, don't get the ball up in the air as much, they might want to start considering you know, something that's got a little bit more forgiveness to get that ball up in there sure. as well. Um, if we pay attention to this left screen, we we'll kind of look at, pay attention to my dis dispersion patterns, you we'll notice how all these circles are kind of separated from about 10 to 15 yards apart with where I was a carry distance. Mm -hmm. So starting at my 60 degree, a full swing was going right at 100 yards. 56 was going 116 yards. 52, 130 yards. So notice is about that 10 yeah. to 15 yard kind of gap. Now wedges for me is always awkward for me to hit a full swing with my wedges because I don't usually do it with a 60 yeah. degree. So I did this just to kind of prove a point, just essentially show that we want to have a good kind of gap. With my wedge game, I have a nine o'clock swing, I have a 1030 swing. So my nine o'clock swing with my 60 actually carries about 75 yards. Okay. My 1030 actually carries 90 yards. Then going from there, my 56, um, nine o'clock swing carries about 95 yards. I see. 10:30 carries 110. So I have all those distance covered with those with those clubs. Yeah. So essentially, my 60 degree, my 56 degree, my 52 degree, and my pitching wedge. I have three different. I have 12 different clubs between those clubs. So I work okay. really, really hard to get my gapping down. Um, yeah. As a better player, you're, if you hit your wedges close, you can you make more parts. You right. can score lower. So that's yeah. I know that's one thing the fitters uh, stress here a lot is especially wedge gapping because um, that's where again your scoring clubs are and that's where you want to be as precise as possible. And so the fact that you do have all those different shots in your bag, you know, with each club there uh, in your wedges is, is yep. very vital. And uh, it's a, a nice recommendation really yep. for golfers to take away there is you know as you get narrower or it's, you know your club gets shorter you got smaller distances that's where you're going to score that's where you're going to make the birdies that's where uh, you might be able to get or you, you might want to get a couple of those shots in your bag to get that gapping as consistent and as you know small increments as possible in between each one so let's kind of just dive into these numbers a little bit deeper here and see if there's anything we kind of want to pay attention to so is any see if there's any kind of red flags or even anything that's really really good mm -hmm. with regards to my gapping I would expect it to be pretty solid I know my numbers pretty pretty well um, if we look at the carry distance with the 60 was right at 100 full swing 116 with the 56 so 16 yard difference 130 so yep. 14 yard 13 14 yard difference We'll notice 52 to pitching wedge, 130 to 143. 
Um, so 13 yards gap, I think I know it's about an 11 yard gap between these two clubs, 12 yard gap between the nine and the eight iron, and then I got 12 yard gap between eight and seven iron, um, 14 yard gap. So pretty pretty consistent all the way all the way through, as you can see. About 16 yard gap between my six and, and five iron there, and 13 yard gap between the five and four iron. I'm not surprised that the three iron did carry and go a little further than everything yeah. else. So you'll notice here the difference between the four iron and the three iron. Now this club is more like a utility iron to me. Yeah. Something that I'm trying to get out there pretty pretty far. I have actually bent that three iron a little bit stronger so I can get that thing going a okay. little bit further so, there too. Right, and that is a driving iron for you. So yes. you're, yep. when you use that club, you know, most of the time that you bring it out of your bag is going to be off the tee. Most of the time it's off the tee, okay. yes, yes. Unless I have a gap there where I need to hit something about 250, 260 yeah. into, into a green where I can maybe chase it up there. And the yeah. reason why I say chase it up there, we notice, pay attention to the landing angle and height with that particular club. Notice the height, 85 sure. feet in the air. Everything else was at least about 100 feet yeah. in the air. So that thing's going to have a hard so, time stopping on the green yeah. if I hit that thing into the green. Right. Um, speaking of peak height, that's another number that's really important to pay attention to as you go through your bag. Tour average is about 100 or 110 feet in the air is, is the kind of the, the peak height uh, through the entire bag. Um, now, pay attention to the wedges. Notice my peak height with the wedges were a little bit less you're not exactly full swings. Yeah. You're not going to have a chance to kind of reach that peak height. But from pitching wedge all the way through to my forehand, I'm expecting that peak height to be very, very consistent all the way through. So if we notice pitching wedge 113 feet in the air, 112, 114, 116, 116, 106, 106. Mm -hmm. So pretty consistent all the way through there. We notice it starts to drop off a little bit at that five and four iron there. Um, still over 100 feet in the air, so it's still got plenty yeah. of stopping power. If a customer comes in and they just can't keep that thing up in the air, what you'll notice is that four iron is probably actually going the exact same distance as the five iron, just because it's carrying oh, the I same see. distance. Yep. You need, need loft, need, need help to get that ball up in the air. Hybrids are designed a little bit more MOI, a little more forgiving. Got that CG all the way back, get yeah. that ball to launch up in the air sure. a little bit, a little bit easier too. So. Sure. Yeah. Yep. One thing too I know that we like to talk about is the landing angle too. And I know you have your driving iron and your three iron kind of built to be a, a lower launching off the tee that yep. you can kind of chase down the fairway. So I mean that's kind of expected, right? The lower uh, landing angle, lower height, but you know your landing angle through as well is pretty darn consistent. Um, yeah, very consistent. Ma kind of yep. matching up with the height, but you got you know right around 50, a little bit maybe over 50 throughout. Yep. Um, with every club really in your iron set. Recommendation for landing angle with an iron above 45 degrees. Okay. With a driver under 40 degrees. Okay. So essentially, or sorry, around about 40 degrees. Landing angle, anything that's under 45 degrees with with an iron, that's when we maybe start considering. Once again, that, that, that hybrid route yeah. or another club to help get that ball up, come okay. up in the air a little bit easier. So we'll notice my four iron right here was 44.9. Starts to kind of taper down there with those five and four iron there a little bit there yep. too. So 45 degrees is a good st standard or 100 or 110 feet in the air is a good standard as well. Yeah. Yep. I think, you know, one thing to consider here as well is just gapping the importance of it in general, making sure that, um, you know, you have really a club or a shot in your bag for any distance all the way up. Now, looking at the the chart or the the map on the left here, your, your your shot dispersions. Really, every single yardage is almost included in the circle there at some point, right? It is. Um, there's there's no overlapping going on here. There's no club that's doing the same thing. There's no right. six and seven iron that's going the exact same distance. Yeah. So consistent pattern, not much overlapping between any of these clubs here. Which I was pretty impressed with today's performance here. After <laughs> just kind of coming up in here a little bit cold to do it, but yeah, it's always good to know that my Numbers are pretty accurate. Um, I always say in my videos that my carry distance with my seven irons were at 178. Uh, we're pretty at 177.3 today, so pretty pretty cons pretty yeah. consistent right there. Yeah. Well, golfers out there, if you would like to you know see where your gapping is at in your bag, I would suggest talking to a second swing fitter. Uh, someone like Thomas here will be able to give you that advice. Uh, you can also call one of our certified fitters um, online as well, and they'll have a chat with you and uh, get you the clubs that you need. Uh, Thomas, thanks for uh, providing your insight today. Yeah, not a problem. Come in and work with me anytime.